I'm a fan of this one-two punch. It's pretty good. I don't typically go for such shredded. Well, he's beefy. He's shredded. Yeah, yeah. They're. I mean, they're both like those are. That's semi reasonable. Although you know they eat nothing but chicken breast and like kale. I don't know. I kind of like this guy. Yeah. Yeah. That one's okay too, but his face is a little too pretty. Mm. And I'm not into that one. Um, sorry, buddy. He's too skinny. Yeah. He's like, oh, that guy at my office that's kind of cute. Sure. Hot. Yeah. Where the rest of these are models. Like, like man men. Yeah. <laughs> these are man men. There's dicks all in this room. <laughs> the whole hallway smells like cum. <laughs> now he's going to leave it in. <laughs> I forgot Will was editing this. I've had two rum and cokes. Yeah. You, you, I'm a little <laughs> blitzed right now. Hello, everybody. I'm Will. And I'm Kristen. And this is why I'm watching Palm Royale, Season 1, Episode 7. Maxine Ma Bags of Prince. Yeah, I get it now. I'm still having fun. No, yeah, I like. I was a little worried about this episode, and I do see where your friend Zach was like, it's like a Ryan Murphy show now. I see that. I don't 100% co-sign it, but I definitely see the, like, footprints on the way to that. Where I feel the Ryan Murphiness is that literally these last two or three episodes, we've gotten about ten minutes into the episode, and I'm like, we skipped an episode. Yeah, uh-huh. But then I'm like, but no, that can't possibly be. So yeah. it's giving me that whole, like, they traded off scripts thing. Oh, yes. It's giving that. me that vibe. where so the, the Glee thing, where it was like him and... Um, where every third episode made it was sense. Like, it was like him and... Falchuk. Falchuk and, and one other person, and Murph, it was like no. every... They were, like, each writing every third episode, mm -hmm. and so we were like, that's why Quinn seems like she's a psycho, because three different men are writing her and not talking to because each other. Because at any given moment, I find it delightful. I have yeah. not tired of the production values. No. But- Especially not in this episode with that <sighs> house. But the issue I'm having is it has the plotting of, like, a Scooby-Doo episode. Sure. Where it's like- the prince was acting real conspicuous, yeah. and what do you know? Yeah. Like, and, and, and he would have gotten away with it, too, if it weren't for you meddling kids. And so I'm like. falling back on that whole, <laughs> I, I I think the cast is elevating it. 100%. And, like, I don't remember the specific line, but there was, like, two or three different line readings and reactions in this, specifically from Kristen Wiig, yep. where I'm like, that wasn't necessary. Mm -hmm. Like, the face she made was not necessary to convey the scene, and yet that's the part that I'm showing up for. Yeah. Well, it's like, okay, so there's so much zaniness, and it's like, so for so, so this is Skeet's funeral episode, for so much of this episode, To she, the point that we were, we went a five minutes being like, who died? Who died? Yeah, I was like Literally very, Skeet. yeah. Uh, oh, I, it, it, Forgot. It, it's positioned in such a way that yeah. you're like, oh my god. Yeah, like, someone died. <laughs> but it's like, she spends so much of this episode just trying to find a piece of Rollins tartan that she can wear because nobody told her that that was something they did and she doesn't want to be left out. And then, so it's like... That, and that was her that was her motivation for so yeah, much of so it. So much of the episode. <laughs> that and the then, plot was an afterthought. Bizarre. And then we get to that beautiful, beautiful moment the next morning where Robert is like giddily coming home from just apparently getting his back blown out by the prince or blowing the prince's back out. We, it was, they were kind of, we couldn't they fully tell. They strictly as give and take. Give they and take. A little, a little bit of both. <laughs> <laughs> and now that we know that he's a con man, you yeah. know it's good. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> the best dick we've ever seen. You know. So... He comes home absolutely giddy from that, and she is just, like, you know, writing down all the check amounts and everything from all the RSVPs, and they have this really beautiful, tender moment where he's like, well, now I know what's happened to you. Like, Douglas is taken by the FBI. Like, I'm absolutely not I going. I could never leave I you. I could never leave you in this moment, and it's like, also- And yes, that's what I want from this show. But it doesn't feel earned. Yeah. It doesn't feel 100- It feels sort of earned, but not 100% earned. Well, again, that's why I say I think it feels earned because the work the actors are putting in. Yeah. But, like, and plot wise, plot and story-wise, it's not 100% earned. And so we just have this moment where she tells the story about... I want about, material that's deserving of it. Because yes. we... 
multiple two or three separate scenes with Kristen Wiig, Ricky Martin, yeah. Laura Dern, and Carol Burnett, and I'm like, this is beautiful. So good. I wish it felt like I wish it felt like we came somewhere. Yes. Like 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 I wish it felt like the journey that the show was treating it like it was. Yeah. And not we found out that he might be gay two episodes ago. <laughs> and then yeah. and now he's in this like just whirlwind with uh-huh. the prince. And so like again, they she just she tells the story about Douglas and how she didn't know him, but it was like the best decision she ever made. And she's like, you go and you be with the prince. But, like, he's got $250,000 of Norma's money, so you eat champagne and caviar every single day. And you, I love you, that sentiment, You too. spend that money. And I just kind of fucking love that. And then, like, immediately she turns on a dime and sells out this prince. Prince. Because, again, he is a con artist. But it turns out the princess is working for the modeling agency that Mitzi... And that's hilarious to me, that why is she so... Like, she's the one enforcing the no photos rule. Yeah. And so why is the day player the one that's so committed? To the, and he's like, 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 I'm like, where are you going to take Robert, though? So he said no photos in the previous. No, well, I know now that. Well, now he's got $250,000. He could take Robert wherever he wants to go. Uh, $2.1 million in 1969? Okay, yeah, 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 That'll yeah, take yeah, you yeah. fucking far. So he's just going to pretend it's his... Whatever. It's his yeah. south of France. Ma- but that, but you're I'm but I'm totally on your team where it's like, why what are is she getting out of this? Why are you tackling Mary in the backyard of a funeral? Anne. Or or Anne, sorry. In the backyard of a funeral to get this no pictures, like the worst that's gonna I don't think the shiny sheets go to fucking England. Like <laughs> Well, and the show is so out of pocket that at any given moment you were like, so help me God if she murders Anne. I would lose my mind. I, because Anne is one of the few She feels like a things. like a righteous pillar. Yeah, one of the few things I yeah. can cling to. Yeah. <laughs> also, I had like a 180 with Mary in this episode because I've hated her. And she this whole Shelby plot <laughs> was hysterical. But again, almost entirely based on material that what's her name? Uh, uh, uh Lynn- Where is she? Julia Duffy. But again, almost entirely based on what Julia, like choices Julia Duffy was making. Yeah, 100%. like I refuse to believe it was in the script that she held the photo up upside down twice. <laughs> like that's something that they were like, "How do we punch this? Yeah, like how do we punch yeah. this up?" No, a hundred percent. There's so many, and this is to, to expound upon what I meant when I was like, "The show's so out of pocket." Is that there's a handful of things that I think go without saying that the show bends over backwards to say. Sure. And then there's other things where I'm like, have we not dealt with that? So and I, apparently not. I like, think <laughs> that's a symptom of the 10 episodes versus mm-hmm. 8 or 6. Because we still... Because they have Barry. Barry's arrested. Perry, we didn't see it. We did, Dinah's already <laughs> moved on. <laughs> what? I was like, Perry is arrested and Dinah is already searching for husband number 4. <laughs> <laughs> and again, it's funny, but I, I get the sense that Leslie Bibb just went rogue with like sure. B roll. <laughs> like, well, okay. like, what, what are they called? Not B roll. Um, second. <laughs> just like yeah, like second unit. Yeah, so, second yeah. unit. And she's like, we're gonna get, we're gonna get some coverage. We're gonna get some footage. <laughs> um, so that's the thing for me too. Is it's like I I understand that it has been sort of like every woman for herself so far, but like to go back to the the Mary of it all. We are still dealing with this 75K for fibrosis. And she's like, my husband died from fibrosis. And apparently it is like an illness that you can just acquire. But like something tells me that um, David, David Cool or whatever. David Soul. David Soul um, got it from drinking, from excessive drinking. And actually, considering that I made the comment about how I didn't like Mary up until this point, it it was nice to know that she actually is invested emotionally in this thing. Well, especially I, because they've kind of positioned it like they're all just scamming each other. I think it is a little bit half and half. Like I sort of feel like that little girl could be anybody. <laughs> I mean, I guess. Also, it was it was way too specific. <laughs> I, also, I'm sorry. It's just like not 100 percent my problem that little Shelby was born in Montana where there's not even a farm vet. Like, <laughs> and I'm like. Mary, if you're so concerned about that, take it to the ballot box because something tells me you're not. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, you're not voting in Shelby's favor. So. Exactly. <laughs> so it's like I do, but it's like that's the kind of thing where it's like we're still dealing with that. But then, like on other things, it's like somehow we are like leagues past where I thought we'd be for other plot points. Like Norma is like 
she walked around in the last episode, got the pistol. She's got the, or the revolver. She's got the revolver in her bag. She's speaking to people in a way that they understand her. And yet Maxine and Douglas are acting like she is still fully comatose. Well, but she, we she seems take... largely recovered. She is listening. You can see yeah. on Carol Burnett's face <laughs> that she is listening to Always them. Always the right choice. She Doing amazing. She is but... absorbing all the information. But are we to take it on faith that she was going to kill Maxine? I don't know. That I don't... doesn't make any sense. I don't care for that. Because, like, so let's... Because even that... Again, I think we're not following, like, thought lines through. Because so you kill Maxine... I guess fine. How whatever. would going to another location with more like a Witnesses, bigger audience? Yeah, maybe because then it could be anybody. But it is also unless it, unless, it, unless we don't have all the information which from I when feel, Penelope shot. Which ski. I feel like we might Penelope Linda. God knows. Yeah, and like that was meant to be a big shock that he left everything to her instead of Evelyn. Duh. Yeah, because even Evelyn was not surprised. And apparently this is the worst day of Linda's life. And I'm like, so you've got millions you're, of dollars. You're beside yourself <laughs> you've got, with this. <laughs> you've now got millions of dollars, uh, at least one Renoir, at least one Ming Dynasty vase, and some un non-working, priceless pocket watch. And you can't think how possibly that could fund your, like, absolutely radical feminism? What? You don't think that can take down Spiro Agnew? <laughs> You're killing me! Well, and they were in a farce when Maxine came in, <laughs> and the one of them hides the Renoir in her shirt. And my favorite, the vase is just laying there. She's like, and what? <laughs> she's just slowly yeah. pulling it away. And, and Maxine does not have a care in the world. If even if Linda was like, I am fleecing Eleanor for everything she's worth. You could Maxine give, would be like, what can I stuff down my top? You could give Maxine one of those scholastic spot the difference, and she would be like, <laughs> it's the same picture. Yeah. But also, she would just help Linda. Yeah. She'd be like, sure, Ma or like Eleanor doesn't need all of this stuff. Or Evelyn, sorry. And you know, So honestly, many old lady names. <laughs> I, I, I do like the ins and outs of who's on whose side and who's in cahoots with who. Sure. However, I think it is too fickle. So that was the thing I was going to say earlier is like, I'm okay with like Dinah immediately. People falling out of favor. Well, but I'm fine with her immediately trying to find a new rich husband. Mm -hmm. That's whatever. I don't like her walking around two fingers up to, to Douglas and Maxine the whole time. Like, well, like now it's, now it's your problem. Obviously you did that. And I'm like, you know, they didn't though. You know, it was Perry. And also like you said, you were like, she still has intel on you. Like, she yeah, she knows that you had an abortion, which was illegal, super illegal. She knows that you bought a love nest for your, I don't know, is, Cuban, what is, is he legal? <laughs> like, you know? Cuban missile or what? what? Like, yeah, Cuban missile. <laughs> but it's like, I, that's just the kind of stuff where it's like, Maxine is not totally ignorant of how to like also play this game. And so I did really appreciate then when Maxine talked to Raquel and she was like, your husband. Good use of Raquel in this episode. Yes. She was like, your husband's a criminal. How do I, like, get out of this? And she was like, well, you either, like, bribe everybody or you give them a bigger fish. And, she and was I was like, terrified she was going to screw over Raquel. I with, thought so, too. With, with, with Pinky. Pinky. And I was like, well, way to re return that favor. But Well, he also, like, I I didn't fully feel that because he just got out of Sing Sing. I also think it's very funny that all these Florida criminals are going to prison in New York. Here's hoping it continues. Sing Sing is in New York. Well. All of his business in there in New York. So like... Let's keep this trend. <laughs> Everyone go to Sing Sing. But yeah, and I did also appreciate the moment where Maxine realizes that it's her name on all of the cashier's checks and the money and the like fraudulent, you know, things or whatever. Um, but again, there goes the sort of thing with the motivations because it's like just before like that the the like arresting and everything actually happens she comes clean to Douglas that like okay she was pregnant so that we have we are officially there but she lost the baby just before the wedding not after the wedding and he seems like like that has wrecked his whole yeah. world view in a way that like the baby was lost one way or the other. So, like, you would have left her in the midst of a miscarriage if you had only known that she lost the baby before the wedding? I don't know. It's, like, it's it was really, to like, tosses up his motivation. I have a hard time with Douglas. Me too. And I know that this is a little bit a me thing. Um, 
I have blinders with with characters sometimes. <laughs> he was giving me Golden Retriever in the first three episodes. Yeah. And so I just accepted that. Yeah. And so even though in episode four, five, six, and seven, he has not continued that, I'm like, well, this is weird. Why is he behaving against type? Yeah. And so it, that's the thing is I think I think he was golden retriever coded at the beginning, but then it's like the more you get to know him, he's like a Jack Russell Terrier. So he's like just out for chaos somehow. And it's like it's just I not I helpful. Like them, I like I I, I, I like, feel like so much is up in the air with this show that yeah. we do. This goes to the Anne thing, where it's like we need a couple more things that we can actually like cling hold to, on to, yeah, like to get our feet on the ground. Because again, to go back to that, it's like you're totally right. Where it's like, why does this model who's posing as a princess give two shits about the worst case scenario? Is that unless he promised her money? But I guess I don't. I mean, I guess worst case scenario, she doesn't get into society. But, but like, she can't be holding too close to it because she's telling Mitzi about it. Yeah, true. Or, well, maybe she didn't tell Mitzi, but Mitzi saw her. She's like, now she's going around Mitzi with a prince. Didn't, yeah, I don't know. But again, he's also not a prince, so, like, I'm very, I am confused. Um, But yeah, it's just, like, it's a lot of stuff like that that's just, like, very, I don't know. And then all of it, like, that's the thing, too, is, like, Virginia suddenly had, like, scruples in this episode where she was like, I'm not stealing from your dad's house on his funeral. And I'm like, all of a sudden, you don't you care about like what what the circumstances are because it didn't seem like she did before. I wish they were doing more with her. Yeah, because I think that she has the potential to yeah. be a really great character, and the show thinks we're really invested in what was her name, Sylvia, or no? Yeah, Sylvia, the pregnant one. Uh huh. And. I, they're mistaken. I'm only invested in her and that I keep thinking it's Samantha Sloyan. It does look like Samantha <laughs> And then I have to keep reminding myself it's so, not. <laughs> so that's the thing. So she did have her baby in this one. They had, like, planned a water birth, this whole thing. Douglas had to, like, you know, help and, you know. In a beautiful such bathroom. Such a beautiful bathroom. But you're totally right where it's just sort of like... In the first place, I'm very confused about why they're stealing things in order to save her husband from Vietnam. Because... I, we maybe we talked through that the, well, I might, the explanation. I might be forgetting something about my admittedly limited knowledge about getting drafted to the Vietnam War. But, like, I was not aware you could buy your way out of it. I thought you had to, like, you know, you buy your way out like, I have my flat, I have flat feet or move to Canada spurs. or I'm a, I'm gay, like, kind of, you know, that, like, that kind of stuff. I feel like. I feel like just money, but I mean, I guess a Ming Dynasty vase, that's a lot of fucking money, but he's supposed to ship out tomorrow and you think you're, again, with the, I'm so, nobody in TV shows knows how to fence things. Like, you think that pawn shop guy is going to give you market value for a Ming <laughs> Dynasty vase? <laughs> you need time to come up with the, these, like, receipts. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's like, I'm with you. I, I'm a little frustrated, but I am I'm really enjoying watching it because it's beautiful, and again, all and the silly. all the actors and parts of it are very silly. That like knockdown fight with Anne and <laughs> Princess Stephanie, hysterical, <laughs> hysterical. But then there are these moments of like, well, also really deep emotion. The I guess character informing moment of Mary just housing the haggis. Right off the plat. First of all, too <laughs> too much haggis. It was like there was one sheep Ma stomach. What could only be described as mounds. Mounds. Of it's like one sheep stomach per person. It seemed like <laughs> so much haggis. And she was just going at it on the yeah. table, <laughs> raw dogging it as you. Very said. funny. And then it was like her time to shine because she was on the board of the Palm Beach Obstetrics <laughs> thing, and so she helped deliver. The ba baby. I don't know. The more we talk Jack. about it, the more I'm like, no, this is no, good. No, it's great. This it's is great. a good show. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, again, it is very funny, and I and I again, I am enjoying watching it. The girls and the gays it. get oh just mediocre shows. <laughs> no, it's fantastic. Norma did see Robert with the prince, and that seemed to be a whole and thing. She played it. She played it conflicted. Conflicted. It, it, but but it's still charming. Yeah. Um, because that's, you know, it, it isn't it was it ugly Betty 
the Betty White did a stunt cast in something mm. where she was homophobic and it was <gasps> really upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> and it was this didn't go there, yeah, but it, yeah, it, yeah. it threatened us, and I was like, oh. Well, she also like she can communicate, but she's still not speaking like perfectly. So mm-hmm. it's like stuff is still getting lost in translation. And Robert, don't worry, Robert's gonna put all the guns away. <laughs> And he also, he he stuck up for Maxine in that scene, too. He's like, mm-hmm. I didn't trust her at first either, but I do now. And she's like, great. And, you know, all this. And and also, just like, the the prince is so weird. So weird. He's, <laughs> well, he's also, him and Ricky Martin are slightly uncanny because they're comically hot in this way where, like, his nipples were hypnotizing yeah. in that one scene where I was just sort of like... <laughs> well, also, I mean, Ricky Martin has had the type of work done that it actually does not feel like he no. has aged since living La Vida Loca. <laughs> and I'm just like, I know that you are in your 50s. <laughs> like, I'm like, this is... Well, the same with uh, Kristen Wiig. Kristen Wiig looks she got fucking some, amazing. She got some of the good. Yeah. Some of the good good. They have Isabella Rossellini on on set just to the <laughs> that glowy pink potion. Um. So yeah, very strange. Yeah, I would love for them. I'm unconvinced they're going to stick the landing. I yeah, would love we'll for see. them to just land. Well, you said there's a season. They two. claim there's a season two yeah. coming. I don't believe anything anybody says anymore. Oh um, um well Douglas um sent himself away which that that was what I was going to say. I was I just I guess Evelyn she's an unreliable narrator. I agree as well. I'm looking I was looking to see if like we missed anything Characters. but it's like so um the F- FBI came to take Maxine and Douglas was like take me instead. Um which was super bizarre timing after he just looked so devastated by her being like the baby I lost well, the Evelyn baby before the wedding. Be in cahoots. Also super weird. And then, um, because it's 1969, uh, Maxine went to the bank and tried to, uh, cash all the checks that Norma got with the RSVPs, and they were, the bank guy was like, you need a man to, like, do this or whatever, disgusting. Who's your babysitter? Your handler? Yeah, ridiculous. <laughs> um, and so then that's when she looked at the, like, help, or the wanted, um, poster on the wall and saw the prints and was like, well, you either pay up or... Um, what was it? Pay up or what did Raquel say? Pay up or oh, give him a whale, something like that. But there was like a pay up or something up, mm-hmm. and I don't remember what the second one was. But she basically was like, oh, well, like this fish guy, up. no, no, fish something. This guy is the guy that you actually need. And so she went to the FBI, and so they got Douglas released. But then poor Robert was like waiting for him to like for the prince to like take him away and she didn't tell him and she's going to and then he's gonna turn on her yeah and... yeah that's the kind of thing where i'm like that's the ryan murphy of it all where i'm like i can just see like three steps ahead of like what's coming and then mitzi's gonna run in for three seconds and explain something yeah i'm like i'm <laughs> i'm liking kaya gerber still but it is also it's very like what are you doing like why is <laughs> this could be anybody so okay um well we'll be back next week we got Three more? Three more, yeah. Eight, nine, ten. Yep. All right. Like and subscribe. Bye.